Jenny wants to know what compounds are leaching out of her cell culture bags, so she runs an extract on her HPLC system. But what if the compound doesn't absorb light very well? And what about those compounds that she doesn't even know might be there? Other detectors can be combined with a UV detector to increase her ability to detect compounds, such as mass spectrometers. Here's how they work. The outlet from the HPLC system is connected to the mass spectrometer. The exiting liquid is charged as it passes through a metal nozzle held at high voltage. The resulting droplets evaporate, providing a stream of dry ions. These are attracted towards the oppositely charged ion transfer tube and transported to the quadrupole, which consists of four metal rods. In the quadrupole, each opposing pair of rods is electrically connected. Voltages are applied to the rods to generate an electric field, which affects ions based on both their mass and their charge, the mz ratio. The quadrupole acts as a mass filter. Only ions of a certain mz ratio will reach the detector for a given set of voltages. If the settings on the rods are held constant, only selected ions with a single mz ratio are monitored. When the electric fields are gradually changed, a full range of mz ratios can be scanned to produce a mass spectrum. Jenny then simultaneously gets information about her compound's characteristics and quantity. But how can she decide between the single quadrupole mass spectrometers available? First, Jenny considers robustness. An ion source that is orthogonal to the ion transfer tube more efficiently handles dirty samples. A heated nozzle and supporting and counter gas flows further benefit robustness. Second, the compounds that can be detected depends on the ion source. Electrospray ionization is suitable for polar, relatively labile compounds. Atmospheric pressure chemical ionization is suitable for low or medium polarity compounds. An instrument that allows easy switching between these helps Jenny prevent workflow interruptions. Third, the mass range also impacts what ions can be seen. Can Jenny see both cyanide ions and a 5-residue oligonucleotide? The thermoscientific ISQ-EC mass spectrometer has a mass range from MZ10 to 1250, while the ISQ-EM extends this to MZ2000. Fourth, there's scan speed. In order to characterize a UHPLC-separated peak properly, Jenny wants 20,000 mass units per second. A slower scan speed will mean she may not be able to get accurate quantification. Finally, Jenny is concerned about having to learn new software. However, her chromatography software, Thermoscientific Chromelian Chromatography Data System Software, supports the ISQ-EC and ISQ-EM and helps translate technical details into understandable terms. Mass spectrometry adds critical information to Jenny's chromatography. Her insistence on robustness and simplicity leads her to a single choice. The thermoscientific ISQ, EC, and ISQ-EM single quadrupole mass spectrometers.